Hey, what's up guys? My name is Faison and in this video, I will be discussing how you can apply physics concepts to your boom lever, specifically with static analysis. And this will be the first video in a series where I just go into depth about physics concepts so that you can build the best possible science Olympiad boom lever. <laughs> Before we get into the video, please be sure to leave a like if you enjoy it, drop any questions or feedback in the comments below, follow me on social media, uh, my links will be in the description below, or you can find them in the end screen. And if you will enjoy science, technology, and engineering content, please be sure to subscribe to the channel because I post new videos just like this every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Now let's get right into the video. Before I teach you how to apply static analysis to your boom lever, you first need to know what static analysis is. And basically, in simple terms, static analysis is the simplest method of finding the force exerted on a member of a structure from an applied force. And you can use this to find the applied forces to your boom lever which is found through a, through the use of math and trig functions which we'll discuss in this video but the main thing you need to know is that you can find the force exerted on all members of your boom lever from static analysis and the best part is is that you don't have to worry about the materials of that structure you just need to know the dimensions to perform static analysis on any structure now, if you're trying to do a static analysis on a boom lever, then there's a couple different things you want to determine from static analysis in terms of design. So if you look at a static analysis of a traditional boom lever, I'll leave a picture of what I'm talking about on the screen right now. But essentially what I'm talking about is where you have a compression member that's horizontal on the bottom, a tension member that's diagonal, and then a vertical member that connects both other members and in the picture and the diagram we're using right now we're going to discuss a boom lever that is that is roughly ideal for a division b boom lever so that means 40 centimeters in length and 20 centimeters in height and again that's the ideal size you want your boom lever to be if you're in division b but of course you can't have ideals so we're just going to be talking about this one boom lever and then you can go out and conduct your own static analysis on your own specified dimensions and find your own specialized forces. But if we conduct a static analysis on this boom lever, assuming that this boom lever is able to hold a 15 kilogram load on the distal end, then you'll see that that the compression member must withstand roughly 300 newtons of force while the tension member must withstand 334 newtons of force. And the funny part is, is that that vertical member right there connecting both experiences zero, zero force at all. So that piece is not affected whatsoever and does not contribute to your boom lever at all. So if you have like bracing or you believe your boom lever is strong enough, to survive without that vertical member, then it's in your best interest to remove that piece because it's not helping you. It's just some extra weight that you could remove if you want your boom lever to perform better or get like a better efficiency. All right, so now we're gonna do the static analysis of the boom lever I was discussing, which is 40 centimeters in length, 40, and 20 centimeters in height, 20, and now we also know that this is a right angle. So, let me focus. Right, so now we know that we have three different nodes, A, B, and C, and we know this angle has to be 26.1 degrees because this is a right angle. And we also know that there's a 15 kilogram load because we want to hold everything. So if you want this force, we have to multiply that by gravity, the gravitational constant, 9.8 meters per second squared. So we get 147.1 newtons. And we know the sum of all forces in static analysis equals zero. So we're good to go. Now let's find the reaction force for B. 
So R dx equals 20 centimeters, or excuse me, times, I wrote that wrong, times 20 centimeters has to equal this value. So 147.1, 147.1 newtons times 40. So if we divide everything by 20, that by 20 and that by 20, cancel that out, it becomes two. So RBX equals roughly 300 newtons. So now we know that this piece right here is 300 newtons in compression. And we know it's compression because this value is positive. And because we know that our BX is positive and this is pushing here and there's an X, there's an X force on A, we know that our AX is actually negative 300 newtons. So now that we know this, we can now find the force of tension on AC and R, which is equal to RAX. So RAX, RAX equals AC, the force on AC, so we call it AC, times cosine of this angle, and this angle is 26.1. So cosine 26.1 degrees. So if we divide both sides by cosine, cosine 26.1, degrees and we know that rex is actually three negative 300 newtons we know that ac hold on let me write this real quick 26.1 degrees ac equals roughly negative 334 newtons so now we know that ac is equal to 334 newtons we know that this piece right here has 334 newtons in tension. Tension, because this is negative. So now that we know this, we know that if you want this boom lever to hold the full load, it has to, it has to withstand 334 newtons in tension, and this piece has to withstand 300 newtons in compression. And funny enough, this piece right here needs to hold nothing nothing zero newtons so you can really just remove this piece at all or excuse me remove this piece altogether and you won't have any other force acting upon this you just have to make sure everything's stable now if you flip this boom lever design if you flip this boom lever design me, flip this boom lever design right here and now we have 40 centimeters on top and you have your loading block on the bottom and you still have your 20 centimeters in length, the, the numbers are still the same. The placement is just different. So now this piece is in tension. And because this piece is the 40 centimeter piece, this piece has 300 newtons in tension. And instead of 334 or 300 newtons in compression, this piece has 334 newtons in compression. So if you're considering a different type of boom lever, then it's really in your best interest to stick to something like this, where it's much harder to, because it's much harder to adjust and improve compression than it is for tension. So you're gonna have a better time with your boom levers if you stick to this design, because it's a lot easier to adjust for tension, because literally most every single boss of stick or bass stick should be able to hold the maximum load it just comes down to which piece will be able to hold the compression so again just use this design if you want the best success but if you, there's another way to improve your boom levers so if you have a boom lever like we said we saw that this piece has 300 newtons roughly of force while this piece has 300 and bad pen Hold on, 334, this would work, 334 newtons of tension. Now we can redistribute that tension and compression if we add trusses. And trusses are just those little X's you see on your boom lever or any other structure like a bridge or a crane or something. And those things distribute, distribute the weight between each member. And the more bracings or for other members you have in between these two 
main pieces, the greater that force is distributed. So rather than 334 newtons, this is less than 334 newtons. And that's because everything, like I said, is redistributed. So the more forces you have here, the less moment force each individual member has. So that's able to withstand a greater amount of force and helps make your boom lever a little more efficient. So if you do put some X's here or bracing, then you should then you should be able to experience less forces on each individual members, which is why everyone in the right mind uses some form of bracing for their boom levers. So it's up to you how many you use, but you can always do static analysis on each truss to find out how much each individual bracing is withstanding for your boom lever or if each one is even helping.